Today, we're going on a quest to learn how to breathe life into music. In Ori and the Blind Forest, Ori is tasked with recovering the light of the three main elements of water, wind, and warmth. And in this video, we're going to do the same. With these three elements, we will learn how to bring life and energy into music and make it come alive. Gareth Coker has worked on music for franchises like Halo and Minecraft, but it's his score for Ori and the Blind Forest that really launched his career, and his masterful use of these elements may be the reason why. So how do you know something is dead? Well, the first clue is that it's not moving. The first element on our journey is water, which for us represents movement. There are a lot of ways we can have movement in music, and really what we're talking about is rhythm. At the basic level, we can make our music feel alive by giving it a pulse. In climbing the Ginso tree, we have a constant eighth note pulse from both pitched and unpitched percussion, which gives us a steady groove for the more flowing melody to sit on top of. Later in that same track, the pulse is given to the low strings with this climbing figure. Just like a living thing has a pulse keeping it alive, the steady pulse of the background parts keeps us moving forward. We can also get a pulse from a more complicated pattern, like an ostinato. Ostinato is Italian for obstinate or persistent, and it refers to a little musical motive or phrase that keeps repeating over and over. An example of an ostinato is this figure that drives the background of Gumo's hideout. Even though the rhythm is not a constant stream of eighth notes, we still have a steady pulse keeping the music alive. Rhythm can also be used for agitation taking simple parts and invoking them with more energy. Tremolo in the strings is a classic example of agitation, like how it's used in the opening of the ancestral trees. At a basic level, the violins are just playing whole notes, but by agitating them, the part becomes much more tangible and visceral. In Racing the Lava, we have another violin part that, at the structural level, is just steady quarter notes. But by agitating the quarter notes with these fast falling runs, we end up with a part that is violent and energetic. The last thing we'll look at for rhythm is meter which is another aspect of the music that is simple to overlook, but can have a major impact on the feel and energy of a piece. For example, in The Crumbling Path, Coker uses a 5-4 meter, which feels off-kilter and stumbling. It's exactly the kind of feeling you want to create for the player to feel rushed and uncomfortable. The next element on our quest is wind, which represents the cycle of breathing. There are many aspects of breathing that can be expressed with music. To start, there can be a sense of rising and falling that mirrors the shape of taking a breath in and letting it out. The strings at the beginning of first steps into sunken glades breathe in this way. Another way that wind and breath influence music is with natural phrase length. There's a reason so much music can be broken down into two or four bar units, which is similar to the amount of time it takes to express a complete thought 
before needing to take a breath. In Naru, Embracing the Light, we can hear this play out. The very opening theme of the track is eight bars, built up of four distinct two-bar phrases. You might be thinking, this isn't very remarkable, but that's exactly my point. One of the most common pieces of feedback I give to students on their work is that the melody feels like a run-on sentence. It never stops to take a breath or finish the thought. I think there's a fear of disrupting the flow, but the more you listen to great music, like the theme from Naru, the more you'll appreciate that these little breaks between phrases are actually helping the music feel natural and more like a living, breathing thing. The last element to obtain to complete our journey is warmth, which represents imperfections. And one thing that does not have warmth is the YouTube algorithm. So please remember to give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel so that we humans can beat the robots for a little bit longer. Thanks. One of the beautiful things about natural textures, for example, the grain of wood or the branches of a tree, is that while there may be certain general rules about how the texture works, like the color, direction, width, and so on, there's also an element of randomization and imperfection. When people say a mock-up sounds bad, most of the time what they're saying is that it sounds fake. And one of the things about virtual instruments that can sound the most fake is a sound that never changes. Now, instead of going down the rabbit hole of techniques for making MIDI sound more real, I'm going to share with you what the pros do. Hire live musicians. Now hear me out before you bail. It's the 2020s, and if you're watching this video, you probably have access to the internet. So sites like Fiverr or Museversal let you hire remote musicians. There are also forums and Discord servers. All of these places where if you put in enough legwork, you can find musicians to collaborate with, even on a tight budget. And the value is undeniable. Just listen to this oboe performance from Tom Boyd in Up the Spirit Cavern Walls. The quickest and best way to get a result like that to make your music feel alive is to have a real live human perform it. And if you wanna take it to an even deeper emotional level, there's really no faster shortcut than a real human voice, like this performance from Airely Brighton. You don't have to hire a full symphony orchestra. Even one musician or vocalist can completely change your music. I once scored an indie horror film on a very tight budget. I hired the very talented Sandro Friedrich, who plays like 200 ethnic wind instruments for a single one hour session. And I gave him a couple of motivic ideas and said, please play these motives on a bunch of instruments, improvise, have fun with it send me whatever you get done in an hour. The result was a toolkit of custom phrases and sounds that I incorporated into the entire score. And that score ended up winning me this from a one hour session with a live musician. And if you're still resisting or you can't find anyone to work with, at least play something yourself. Even playing an egg shaker like this one with an imperfect human performance can give your track a little bit of extra warmth. Giving more attention to rhythm, phrasing, and actual human expression will bring your music to a whole new level. But if your harmony is boring, your music is still going to fall flat. That's why you can't afford to miss this video here, where I teamed up with Gavin Leeper to show you how to turn C major into anime harmony. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.